Usually as you progress through a game, you'll be rewarded for your efforts with better and better weapons, because we don't do anything without being offered an incentive. We say usually because there are exceptions. Games in which the very first weapon you get is basically the best one in the whole dang game. We've covered this topic before, twice in fact, but you, the viewers, just kept coming back with more brilliant examples. So here we are in the privileged position of once more getting to showcase these bonkers powerful starter weps. Lucky us! Consider these seven suggestions for starting weapons that were actually the best weapons in the game, and I believe I was offered an incentive for delivering this intro? Lost one, is this the best you can do? This mortal is not worth my time. You might think 1995 fantasy game Stonekeep incapable of shocking a hardened 2020s gamer like yourself, but how many games today would have an adorable dog called Woof turned into a skeleton in the opening cutscene? Down, Woof, down! No! No! Woof! At least, I think that's what happened. Only about four pixels high, this thing. You begin your dungeon crawling quest in Stonekeep with only two things. A burning desire to avenge Sweet Woof, and a pair of noodly punching arms that are only good for killing the giant ants that for some reason frequent this labyrinth. <laughs> Happily, if you know where to look, this opening series of rooms also features the best weapon in the game, the very sharp dagger, as commenter Darren Atchison recalls. Stonekeep had a dagger you could get right away, if you knew how, it was hidden, that dominated the entire, very hand-to-hand -hand combat oriented game. Getting this dagger simply required accessing a secret room and a hidden wall cavity therein before going down the steps that begin the game proper. Yes. This absurdly strong weapon that you get in the first minute will then proceed to make short work of pretty much every enemy in the game, and certainly makes your adventure through Stonekeep a lot more chill. Unless you're an orc. <laughs> there is one downside. Accessing the secret room that contains the dagger also unleashes a gigantic enemy in the first level. Like everything, you can kill it easily with the very sharp dagger, but not before it delivers an ominous message. Beware the Kevin of Bass. Turns out Kevin Bass was one of the programmers on the game. Still, gonna beware Kevins. Got my eye on you, Kevins. I passed through that old mine when I left to get help. There's a workbench inside. You can use it to build a weapon. Far Cry New Dawn is an interesting instalment in the Far Cry series that answers questions like how could the world change and survive after a cataclysmic event and what happens if you shoot a spinning disc of spiky metal into a human being? Oh, that. Kind of what I expected to be honest. This super powerful weapon is a strong starter item, as pointed out by commenter Jester Jules. Far Cry New Dawn is a big example of this. The saw launcher you get right at the start is viable for most of the game, and when it's upgraded, it is pretty much the strongest weapon in the game. When you stumble across your first workbench in post-apocalyptic Hope County, your new friend Carmina encourages you to build a weapon. And the very first one you can build is the saw launcher V.0. Holy is that some kind of saw launcher? That's amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Although language, Carmina. It is the post-apocalypse, but manners haven't quite died out yet. Things that will die very quickly from now on are your enemies, because New Dawn has handed you the best weapon in the game. Why is it so good? Well, firstly, it's stealthy. So, if you're careful, shooting it will not alert your enemies, allowing you to pick them off one by one while you keep your location a secret. Secondly, the teeny saws you shoot out are very powerful, so they take big chunks out of armoured enemies and, if you line up a shot right, you can down multiple enemies in one go. And thirdly, if you happen to miss, these things bounce off of everything except the floor up to three times, so you can still get multiple kills from one shot or just cause some real chaos, especially in tight spaces. Before you start worrying about how easy it is to find lots of tiny buzz saws to shoot out of this thing, it seems that everyone is big into DIY in the post-apocalypse, as ammo for this weapon is abundant. Plus, as Jester Jules said, it can even be upgraded as you progress. 
so, you can easily, and most likely will, keep this as your default weapon throughout the whole game. Just don't try to play frisbee with it. It will not end well, and your friend's fingers will end more abruptly than they used to. Eliminate all of the targets with your smart pistol. Targets neutralized. Titanfall 1 is a multiplayer game, so the extent to which any weapon counts as a starter weapon is debatable, but look, we're here to please. And a fair few of you clearly wanted some respect heaps on one weapon in particular from this 2014 shooter, in which you take control of gigantic mechanized battle robots, and yet the most memorable weapon is a pistol that's part of a default loadout, as Patassa 270 recalls. The smart pistol from Titanfall 1 is a great starter weapon. It's perfect if you want to focus on mobility without losing accuracy. Indeed, accuracy is assuredly not a worry with the Smart Pistol MK5, because it does this. In case you missed that, that was the bullets aiming themselves. Yes, in a medium that constantly asks you to be good at pointing a gun at things, how refreshing to find the Smart Pistol MK5. A sidearm that says, hey, what if aiming was for chumps? It's a ridiculously entertaining weapon that you can wield with great success right from your very first match. And if you want any more proof of the Smart Pistol's potency and enduring popularity, consider that when it returned in Titanfall 2, it was no longer a default weapon, but a boost, i.e. a powerful deployable reward earned by surviving or playing well. It also features in the single-player campaign, in a kick-ass sequence in the final level where you're allowed to play with it for a barnstorming five minutes. Wow, aiming really is for chumps. They're not for sale, son. They're mine. Being a modern day assassin means having the right tools for the job. Agent 47 understood that from day one, with his rather iconic weaponry, as noted by commenter Wandering Walker 1990. Hitman gave you the Silver Baller 45. Never really felt the need to use any other small arms, in the earlier titles at least. Yes, the dinky handgun given to you from the start of the games was perfect for Hitmanning for a multitude of reasons. It was concealable, came with an optional silencer to help you remain stealthy, and you even got the ability to dual wield them. I'd like to see you try that with two sniper rifles. Actually, wait, I would like to see you try that with two sniper rifles. Originally a gun found in the training level of the first game, by Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, the Silver Ballers became Agent 47's signature set. Probably in recognition that everyone only ever played with them because they're the best. They even became a huge plot point in Hitman Absolution, with a whole mission to retrieve them. And I understand why. These babies are gorgeous. Oh, shiny. Even though they were replaced in the new Hitman trilogy by the ICA-19, so iconic are these guns that they made an unlockable Silver Baller variant, which is similarly OP like the originals. And again, like the originals, it is still concealable, no matter what outfit you're wearing. Just don't ask us where he's hiding it. Drop the weapon. Now! <laughs> you guys afraid of a hammer? Drop it, smartass. Red Faction Guerrilla is a game about bringing down a corrupt occupying force, specifically through knocking down its buildings. See? Now the corrupt occupying force has nowhere to keep its... corrupt occupying force equipment. At the very start of the game, you're given two tools with which to bring about the downfall of this sinister Mars-occupying force known as the EDF, the sledgehammer and remote explosive charges. And while this is technically two weapons, enough of you left comments claiming, justifiably, that they're the best weapons in the game that we had to honour them. Comments like this from Ampers, who said, The hammer from Red Faction Guerrilla. 
And this one from Jevin Johnson, who said, No remote charges from Red Faction Guerrilla? Really? Why are these weapons so good? Well, because they make it an absolute breeze to blast apart entire buildings. An activity that never really gets any less satisfying as long as you play, and that pairs excellently with the game's robust destruction physics. And while there are guns in Red Faction Guerrilla, it's almost always more enjoyable to knock seven bells out of the EDF using the hammer and remote charges, which nestle into your inventory in the tutorial mission and are extremely unlikely to ever leave. Sorry pal, you weren't using your pelvis, were you? All in all, there's basically nothing in the game the sledgehammer and remote charges can't ruin, except obviously whatever the EDF makes its vending machines out of. Maybe build everything else out of that. Just an idea. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. If you can sense a trend in my entries for this list is that I like to be silent when I'm being deadly. And does commenter Ute Scoot have yet another perfect starting weapon for me? Metal Gear Solid 3's Trank Pistol is OP since it bypasses having to stealth a lot of sections. Guards finding an unconscious guard won't go on full alert like they do if you kill someone. Indeed, if you don't want to have to slowly shuffle around an area in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, then all you have to do is shoot an enemy unconscious with a Trank dart from the suppressed MK22 Hush Puppy. This allows you to walk right by them rather than crawl on your belly, which ironically is the most snake-like way to get around. And as Ute Scoot noted, there's a real double whammy effect. Not only do the guards not spot you while they snooze, but any other non-tranked guard that finds them asleep won't raise an alarm, probably because that one is always napping on the job. Believe me, I know what it's like to have your co-workers always nodding off. What? I don't fall asleep on the job. I don't. See? Always nodding off. There is some limitation as the suppressor, which helps make things easy, will degrade. But you can find replacement suppressors and slow down the degradation by getting clean headshots in what I assume is a safe direct injection into the brain. For a stealth game, being given an item like this right at the start feels a little like being given a cheat code. It's no wonder so many players play solidly <laughs> with the MK22. Why is no one booing my joke? Oh, yeah, he's napping. I best wake him up for the next one. It's safe to say in Bloodborne, you don't make many friends, or at least you probably shouldn't make many friends. Take this. It's all I can offer us, thanks. Do I want to know where this dude got so much pungent blood? Probably not. There is one good friend in Bloodborne you can rely on, however, and you meet them right at the start of the game. Your starting weapon, as commenter Bobby Boo Shampoo recalls. The saw cleaver and the hunter axe in Bloodborne can carry you through the entire game twice. That's putting it mildly. Although Bloodborne is a game that turns out to be full of exotic, weird and terrifying weaponry, it's not surprising that so many players choose to stick with the very first piece of gear you grab in the game. The saw cleaver, for instance, one of three possible choices for starter weapon, remains blisteringly useful throughout your gore-soaked adventures. It's fast, adept at tearing through individual enemies or groups, transforms into an extended cleaver for more long-range hits, and is serrated, which means it deals an additional 20% damage to beast-type enemies. And there are a lot of beast-type enemies. Like, a lot, a lot. Although there are plenty of top-tier weapons in Bloodborne, and many players will eventually bin off their starting gear, the Saw Cleaver's great stats make it a top choice to stick with.
especially when you factor in the saw cleaver's less obvious strengths, like the fact you're probably terrifyingly practiced at causing maximum carnage with it, the weird attachment players form with first weapons, even ones that are horrible mechanical saws, and the fact it's on the box art. So, you know, must be good. Get, get. Can't catch me! Yeah, oh, <sighs> yeah, nice try, went straight into the wall. Yeah. <gasps> oh, oh. My God, James! <laughs> oh no. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed that video. You're gonna be alright, um, buddy! <laughs> then uh, do give us a thumbs up. Uh, thank you so much for your suggestions. And uh, if you have any more, do feel free to share them in the comments below. There's loads of these like, they're just, why do they give us the best ones right at the beginning? The fools, but oh, maybe we shouldn't be telling them this and then they'll give us more. Anyway, uh, let us know in the comments if you enjoyed this. There's way more videos here on screen. If you would like to uh, support us further, other than liking and subscribing, you can join our Patreon, where you will have access to our Discord, where there are lots of lovely people chatting about video games, and you can ask us loads of questions and have a great time. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. All right, good job, Ellen. Now, where's the antidote? Um, um, Pass me the antidote quickly. <laughs> <laughs>